Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be building a really simple command line interface in Go. As always, the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website and I'll be leaving a link to this in the description below. If you do find this tutorial useful, then please feel free to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. So recently I've been doing one or two domain migrations across various hosting providers and I thought it would be a cool idea to build a tool or a program that could be used to query things like the name servers of our website, the CNames, the IP addresses and so on. So the overall aim for this particular tutorial is to give you an idea as to how you can build your own CLIs. I'm simply going to use this tool as a concept or a method of showing you how to do things and how to structure your code. So first of all, why are we using Go for this? Well, Golang is growing massively in popularity and we have seen large enterprise companies such as HashiCorp adopt the language for quite a number of different tools and systems. And for good reason too. The design of Go lends itself incredibly well to these styles and types of applications and the ability to cross compile a binary executable for all major platforms easily is a massive win. So let's get down to it. We're going to start off in an empty project directory and we're going to create the following folder. So cmd slash my CLI. Now this is going to follow the widely accepted Go project layout guide that is available on GitHub and I'll again be leaving a link to this in the description below. Now ideally this will be the main entry point for our application. You don't want all of your packages and all of your code within this one directory. You only want this to be the entry point. So let's go ahead and then create the cli.go entry point for our CLI project. Now within this, we're going to want to do the following. So package main, and we're then going to want to define our list of imports. And for now, we just want the FMT import. Next, we define our main function like so. And just to get started, we're going to do a simple fmt.println. Hello world. Perfect. Now just to sanity check we've done nothing wrong, let's try run this by typing go run cmd slash mycli slash cli.go in the terminal. As you can see, it prints out hello world in all its glory and with the typo included. Okay, so as we're going to be using the urfav slash cli package, we'll need to download this package locally in order to use it. So in order to do that, we need to use the following go get command. So go get github.com urfav slash cli like so. Once we've got that, we can then import it with, into our project. So github.com slash urfav slash cli. Oops. And within our main function, we're going to want to delete that fmt.println and we're going to replace it with this. So r assigns to cli.newapp.run and we're going to pass in os.args. And that should hopefully change fmt to os like so. Now that we've declared this, we want to check to see if there's been any errors. So if r does not equal nil, we then want to log.fatal and the error. Perfect. So now that we've got that up and running, let's try running it again. So go run cmd mycli cli.go. Now, as you can see, this fleshes out your program's response and adds things like the version, the usage, the name of our CLI, and the commands available to us within that CLI. Now, you've got to give it to the creators of the URFAV CLI package. This is very quickly starting to look more like a polished project and not just a minor side project, so kudos to them. We can now go ahead and start adding our own commands into the CLI to make it actually useful. Now, each of these commands will match up with one of our tests. So we'll have a one command, ns, which when triggered, with a supplied hostname, we'll go off and look up the name servers of that particular hostname. Next, we'll have ones for the C name, the MX records, and the IP addresses. So, fairly simple app just to get us up and running 
and we're going to be using the net library or package from the Go standard library. Nice and simple. Let's get started by creating this first command. So we're going to want to do a wee bit of refactoring here. And we're going to want to do app assigns to cli.newApp. Very similar to what we had before, but it's not running with our OS arguments just yet. Next, we're going to want to specify some of the configuration of our CLI, so the app.name. And we're going to look and call this website lookup CLI. Next, our app usage, so app.usage. And this will equal, um, let's you query IPs, C names, mail exchange records, and name servers. And just below this, we're going to want to specify the array of flags that we wish our CLI um, will be able to take in. So my flags assigns to an array of CLI.flag. And within this, the first CLI flag will be a string flag. So CLI.string flag. Its name will be host. So host like so. And we're going to give it a value of, and just for demonstration, tutorialEdge.net. Very quickly change the name to an uppercase N and not a lowercase one. And add the appropriate commas. Next, we're going to want to define our array of commands within our application. So app.commands equals and this will equal an array of cli.command. And within this, our first command is going to have a name of ns for name servers. Its usage is going to be looks up the name servers for a particular host. Fairly, fairly self-explanatory and flags, we're going to set that to equal my flags, which we've defined up here. Okay, next we're going to want to define the action or what is actually executed when we pass in the ns command. So action, and this will be a function that will take in a pointer to a cli.context and it will return an error. Okay, so within this, we want to do the following. So ns, or name server, error, is assigned to net.lookupNS. And we're going to want to take in that flag, so c.string. And we want to take in host, like so. Next, we want to do a wee bit of error checking to see if this returns successfully. And say if error does not equal nil, then return error. And finally, we want to iterate over the name server's return. So for i equals zero, i is less than the length of the name server slice returned, and i plus plus. We then want to use fmt dot printline ns i dot host like so. And finally, if it gets to this point, we want to return no errors. Okay, just below this, we want to add the appropriate commas. And then below our array of commands, we want to then do the following. So error is assigned to app.run and os.args. And again, we need to do that error checking. So if error does not equal nil, then log.fatal that error. Excellent. Right, so let's give this a shot. So go run cmd mycli slash cli.go and you'll see that the ns command has been added to our list of commands. So let's give that a shot now. So once again, go run cmd mycli cli.go, pass in ns and we want to specify the host as tutorial edge.net. This will then go off, retrieve the host name or the name servers and it will print it out in the console below. Now, just a quick note. If you're building a network-based CLI, 
It does help if you've got a decent internet service provider. Unfortunately for some, I'm with British Telecom or BT in the UK and they are absolutely pants. Now that my internet's back up and running and I'm working off a hotspot, I can try running my command once again. And you should see that it successfully returns with the name servers of my website. Excellent. So let's go about building the three other commands that we're going to be using within our CLI. So the next one we're going to do is the IP address lookup. So name, IP, close that with a comma. The usage is going to be looks up the IP addresses for a particular host, partic, like so. And the flags are going to be, again, my flags. Within the action, again, we're going to take in the pointer to the CLI context and return an error. And we're going to do the following. So IP or error equals net dot lookup IP, uh, IP. And again, we're going to use that string host flag. We'll do a little bit of error checking. So if error does not equal nil, we want to do fmt.println error. And again, this is going to return a slice of IPs. So we're going to want to iterate over that and print it out using fmt.println. So for i is assigned to zero, i is less than the length of IP and i plus plus. So fmt.println and IP and just I like so. Should this all go to plan, we want to return nil. And it's always a good check. It's always a good practice to test things as you build it up. So let's do that now. Add the appropriate commas, save that. And let's change it from NS to IP. As you can see, it returns the four IP addresses associated with my website. Perfect. Let's go on to the CNAME command now. So again, open up your JSON or your brackets. The name is going to be CNAME. The usage is going to be looks up the CNAME for a particular host. The flags, again, nothing's changed. So flags equals my flags. And the action, just like our one before, cli.context, error. And within this, we want to do the following. So CNAME or error is assigned to net.lookup CNAME and c.string host. You probably see where I'm going with this. So if error does not equal nil, fmt.println and that error. And then we want to fmt.println the CNAME and return nil. Add the commas. And let's try running this. So again, we're going to change IP to CNAME and it returns the canonical name or the C name for my website. Now, last but not least, we're going to want to do the MX records. So name, MX, usage is going to be fairly self-explanatory. So it looks up the MX records for a particular host. Flags, nothing's changed and the action will be func and cli.context error. Now within this, much like we've done in previous ones, we're going to do mx or error is assigned to net.lookupmx c.string and again with that host. Another bit of error checking, so if error does not equal nil, fmd.println print line error and again we want to iterate over our mx slice so for i is assigned as zero i is less than oops, less than the length of the mx slice 
I++ and again fmt.printline mx dot host and we're also going to want to do the mx dot pref again we want to return nil and just before I forget we're going to want to add the return statements here so return error return error and finally return error and again add the commas where necessary okay one final test change c name to mx and you can see that it prints out the mailgun mx records for my website so everything is working as intended okay so one final step let's build our cli and to do so we're going to use the go build command so go build cmd my cli and cli.go this will go away and build a cli binary and we can call that like so cli help just to show all of our commands and you can see everything that we've created up here has been successfully added to our array of commands here now this cli is by no means finished and we should in theory be abstracting all of these tests out to separate packages within our directory but i'll leave that for you to do and to build upon in this tutorial however we've managed to successfully build a really simple yet effective almost production ready cli using the your fave CLI package from GitHub, and this CLI can be cross compiled for any of the major operating systems with minimal fuss, and it features all or most of the features or functionality that you would expect from a production grade command line interface. Now, that's all we're going to be covering in this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, then please leave a like and let me know in the comments section below. And if you see anything wrong or need additional help, again, Throw them down in that comment section below and I'll be happy to help. Cheers.